Welcome everyone. Thank you for making the time to join us tonight. Before we begin, I would just like to acknowledge the Gurungai people, the traditional custodians of the land where I am tonight. And I would like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present, who have been the caretakers of this beautiful country for thousands of years. And I would also like to extend that welcome to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples in attendance tonight. Um, first, I'd like to provide you with an outline of tonight's session together. So this is the first town hall session for the Manly Ward candidates from the Your Northern Beaches Independent team. Um, I'd also like to just let you know we are recording tonight's session mostly just so we can revisit all the great ideas that I'm sure we'll have um, discussed tonight. We are hoping it is the beginning of a conversation, hopefully a fresh new way of doing things and a way of staying in touch with the community. So tonight we have three key aims to introduce you to the Manly Ward candidates for the Your Northern Beaches independent team to listen to Manly Vale and understand your questions, concerns and desires for your area and to better understand what your expectations for council are in these areas and therefore how we could best represent you on council. So before we get into these issues, let's meet the team who would like to represent you in the Manly Ward. We are fortunate to have with us from the Your Northern Beaches Independent Team, the current mayor, Michael Regan, and a current Manly councillor, Sarah Grattan. So firstly, let's meet Michael, who is the current mayor of the Northern Beaches Council, the first popularly elected mayor in Warringah in 2008 and re-elected by the community in 2012. He was elected again once on Northern Beaches Council in 2017 and was re-elected again last week. So Michael, if I were to give you 30 seconds for an elevator pitch to explain what the Northern Beaches Council has achieved under your leadership, what would that be? Only 30 seconds, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's yeah. very kind of you. Um, look, I'll be really quick. Um, I think we've pulled the council together. It was, so I like to tell people and the, and the staff included, it was basically like a forced marriage. There was three very different councils of Manly, Pipwater and Moringa. And um, we had a very difficult task of merging those three councils and coming in after an administrator had spent, what, 15, 16 months there. But what we've managed to achieve is we've um, swung that around with the new CEO and new executive staff. We've made about $30 million annual savings now, which are being reinvested into infrastructure from to repair what was underspent in particularly Manly and particularly Pitwater. Uh, and we're seeing the fruits of that labour now. We're paying off their debts as well. But we've also cut our rates. So we've cut the rates by 76% um, of households, which we said we would do. Uh, and we're getting good buy-in with staff and community. And there's a good connection, direct connection with staff and community to build that trust and respect back. So it's it's a big thing. And, uh, and the governance is really happy and is fantastic now. And Sarah Grattan can take a lot of... Um, her and Sue Hines can take a lot of um, gratitude out of that because they have pushed really hard to change the, the behind the scenes. So it's more run like a business on behalf of the community and it's got a great connection now. So I'm really proud of that. They don't get the, uh, it's the hard yards behind the scenes. They don't get the, uh, the kudos for and you don't see it because it's not a shiny new building or a shiny new footpath or, or something, but they're doing a lot of the hard yards. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's one minute as best I can say is we, I kind of, we're making sure that the new council, the Amalgamated Council lives up to its promise because we pay a lot to live here. Um, and we you know, we love living here because it's a great work and lifestyle. And look, and the pandemic was something amazing. We survived it and we did it well. And again, thanks to staff. I'll stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Some great achievements there. Um, I'd now like to introduce you to Sarah Grattan, one of your current Manly Ward councillors and our number one candidate for the Manly Ward at this election. She is also the COO of UNICEF Australia and a mother of three teenage girls. Sarah was first elected to council in 2017 and she has taken a keen interest in the financial governance and risk management at council and is a member of the audit and risk committee. She is the chair of the Transport and Travel Strategic Reference Group and has led advocacy on the tunnel and bus route changes. Sarah has also led a number of youth issues, including achievement, achieving the recent study bubble for HSC students. So Sarah, in 30 seconds, what are you most proud of achieving for the Northern Beaches since you have been a Manly councillor? Oh, thanks so, so much, Piper. Um, I think sort of there's probably three things. The first thing, Post amalgamation, this was, you know, three organisations into one, and now we're a $5 billion organisation with revenues around $400 million a year. 
And so I think it's really important for me to be able to use my professional skills in governance and risk and finance and, and strategy to essentially be on this board as a councillor of, of this organisation to make sure the numbers add up, to make sure that the, we've got appropriate transparency and accountability for ratepayers' funds. You know, I've been insisting on proper business cases and KPIs for tracking performance. I drive everyone a bit batty with some of those things, but it, it really has improved the governance of the council and I'm really pleased with how it's evolved. Um, second thing is that I've done a lot of advocacy on behalf of the community and you mentioned the HSC uh, crisis, with, which is the most recent one with the students. So bringing the captains together of all of the schools on the Northern Beaches, getting them in front of government ministers, um, getting that change to have that friendship bubble and the study bubble we came from the Northern Beaches and came from advocacy, from having youth voices heard, um, which has just it's been fantastic. But I've also worked hard on things like the Beaches Link Tunnel and advocating for the local community on those issues. So, um, you know, we've sort of shifted, shifted the view to, you know, the council will support the tunnel and, and most of the community, most of the beaches does, but it's now subject to the environment um, being looked after and the effects of, uh, of construction on the local community and also ensuring public transport remains through that tunnel. And so we've been really strong on that. Um, the other thing that the new council has done, it's, it's actually supercharged our ability to get grants and appropriately look after our infrastructure. So we've sort of been working through the Manly Ward on a number of things like footpaths and rebuilding the tidal pools, um, fixing all the toilets has been a big key thing of mine. And, you know, and including Manly Dam's got those new amenities, which cost over half a million dollars actually, um, that was done in I think 2019. And I love that new bike path that's now going down behind um, from the pool down through to the Calabria Club. But I think mostly I've just really enjoyed working with a great team of people. We support each other. You know, we, we can work with all sides of politics because we're independent. And um, it, it's, been, it's been a great four years. Thanks, Sarah. The last four years sound incredibly busy. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, as there are three councillors in the Manly Ward, we have two new candidates for you to, to meet tonight. Um, so let me introduce you to Chris Jackson, a local bus driver, a former soldier and a musician. The Manly resident is a keen swimmer and runner who wants more participation in sport for greater health and well-being. And Chris is a supporter of, lo of local business and wants to ensure the council continues to engage with them in their long-term recovery. So Chris, what are your reasons for running for council? Thanks, Piper. I'm super excited to be here tonight and running with two great candidates like yourself and, of course, Councillor Grattan. Um, I've lived in the area for 20 years. The area has given me so much. Uh, my reason for running is to give back to the area, to the Northern Beaches, but specifically Manly Ward. And, uh, and Manly Vale, I think, gets a little bit forgotten in Manly Ward, and I'd like to see a, a, bigger, a greater focus on Manly Vale going forward. Thank you, Chris. Um, and now to introduce myself, I'm the third candidate for the Manly Ward. Um, so to give you a little bit of information about me, I'm a university student in my first year doing a Bachelor of Communication Journalism. Fun fact, I also went to school locally in Manly Vale at McKellar Girls High School. And I am an active volunteer lifesaver and a current I'm Woman competitor. And I also have a passion for social justice, especially in regards to Indigenous affairs. And I'm keen to see the youth have a stronger voice within council. So some of my reasons for running, as I mentioned, one of the main reasons is that I want to be a voice of support for the youth. I am a first time voter myself this year, and I know that young people sometimes feel like their needs aren't heard. So I want to be that strong voice of support within council. And I'm also passionate about establishing more affordable housing so that I can move out of home eventually and leave my poor parents alone. Um, so now you've met the Your Northern Beaches team in Manly. Um, some of you came to our online launch about a month ago, so you already know all about us. But if you have any questions for us, you are welcome to ask us. Um, and now that you know who we are, we can move on to the important part of the evening, and which is hearing from you guys. So this is your opportunity to ask questions raise concerns or share positive things that are going on in the community. It is important for us to know about 
these positive things too. Um, we do have a few questions that were sent in prior to this. So you will get your chance to speak live or please type your questions in the chat. And we will also be running a few polls um, and we'd appreciate your views on these. So some of the questions um, we want to do a poll on is what makes Manly Vale special for you? Uh, top two issues for Manly Vale for you? And do you ride a bike for transport, exercise, mountain biking or other? Um, please remember that the idea here is that we listen and collect your information about your suburb. We won't necessarily have answers, but we might be able to start or continue to raise awareness about these issues. So if you could please put your questions into the chat and hopefully we'll get to hear more about some of them tonight. Um, to start with, we have seven goals on our Manly Ward flyer that is starting to hit letterboxes. And we believe three of these are very relevant to Manlyville and would like some feedback on how they resonate with you. So the first one is to advocate to reduce local traffic congestion, parking stresses and the adverse impacts of the Beaches Link Tunnel on environment and community. Um, so Sarah, maybe you could comment on this for us. Oh, thanks Piper. Yeah, we all know about the, the traffic congestion around Manly Vale, particularly since that Beeline car park went in and the increasing traffic, the development going on. I know KFC has been causing some issues with right-hand turners and the back of Rosebury Street and some of those areas as well has, has been really quite congested. So we, we have actually been looking um, at some solutions for that area. And it's, of course, it's a bit complex because of the intersection of state and local government owning various bits of the road network, looking at where we can access some funding. Um, potentially, if the Beaches Link Tunnel does go ahead, there might be some money there for us to help invest in fixing some of those local road networks. Um, but, you know, really important to hear from the community. Now, I'm really, I'd love to hear from, from Manly Vale residents about some of your uh, views and thoughts and ideas about how we might improve some of those areas. Hi, my name's Bridget. I don't know um, all of you on the on the call, but um, obviously in terms of traffic congestion, uh, there, there has been a lot of development in our suburb over the last, uh, I've been a resident for 20 years, and I think that's pretty much when it all started. And I, I do see that we all have a, result, a role in the community to provide, you know, um, housing. Uh, but I think what needs to come with that is the infrastructure to support that. And I think um, Kathy's comment around reducing local traffic congestion and parking stresses and adverse impacts is really important. Um, as we continue to see development uh, on the main road there at Condamine Street and um, a lot of proposals that have been put forward to council, um, particularly uh, down near the deviation. Um, and I just, I just think that it is a real issue, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we are a community and there are a lot of young kids that live in the area. And I think we have to maintain that sense of community. And we do see it in the other suburbs and the Northern Beaches. Um, and I think there has to be a recognition and there has to be um, funding to uh, put in place appropriate infrastructure that allows us to cope with that stress that's been put on our suburb. Um, I, and I think a lot of people within our suburb don't want Manly Vale to become, and you know, as Chris said, a second class suburb within the Northern Beaches. And that's, I think there is some sentiment that um, unless council puts appropriate funding into infrastructure in our suburb, um, that will happen. And we, we are starting to see it happen. So, um, but that is my real concern. Um, we are a strong family community suburb and we need the council to ensure that any development, um, you know, compensates for that and puts in appropriate traffic mechanisms to support the livelihoods of residents, young and old. Um, and so that's my my real big concern. So I agree with Kathy completely on that one. Yeah, thank you, Bridget. That's some really good points. Does anyone yeah. else have anything to add on this? Yeah, Stephen? 
Yeah, I think I put it in a question. Yeah, so I asked, I actually asked via Candy Bingham because uh, I was chatting to her anyway about um, about yeah, uh, just like you've said, Condamine Street in the last ten years has got unit block upon unit block approved by council. Some of them defect ridden, according to the Simon Herald, and we're not getting like. And so I said, where do all these developer contributions go? I sent you the letter. It, we got about two hundred grand apparently in contributions, and apparently last year what we what Manly Vale got back for all those units was two footpaths i can tell you where they were if you want but i won't go into the details but that's i, I if, if, if you, <laughs> it just doesn't manly vale doesn't yeah i'll be right with you michael manly vale like most surf clubs get more money spent on them individual surf clubs get more money spent on them than the whole of our suburb we always forgotten if you haven't got a sea view on northern beaches council doesn't really care about you so it, it really winds me up. We we get all we get all, we seem to get the majority of the units just and DUI obviously, but and, and we don't get the funds. Um, I think if people, most people, if you ask most residents whether you want all the units on Condamine Street or two footpaths, I think we'll give the units back. Well, can I ask something? Or, or Mary, do you want to jump in first? I was just no, no, ask... I've got, I've got, um, I want to ask questions as well and, and um, make some observations. That's also go for it, Sarah. Yeah, I was just going to ask Stephen, um, what would you like the money to be spent on? So, if, if we're going to spend some money for for Manly Vale, what, what would be your, the top of your list? Yeah, creating creating some sort of centre. I've spoken to Michael about this when he was in Warringah in 2014, and I know you've got the trees now. So initially, the planet, I get, I understand what condomines are from because it's RMS and all the rest of it. But are you going to where's 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 the centre of Manly Vale? Is it Condomine Street? I'd argue it's probably Rosebury Street, and I know Rosebury Street's technically in Balgala, but I mean, where is our retail centre? Um, where is where do the little shops come? So and and I mean, I don't understand how Newport can be. The same road up there can be so beautiful with all the trees in the middle and have a real community vibe and Condomine well, Street is a, a, a complete mess. And it's like when I when I when I when I bring friends up from from wherever the eastern suburbs or the inner west, they're all like you know I sort of have to say our right, winner KFC and everyone thinks you know Manly Vale. If you drive through Manly Vale, people think it's an awful place. When they turn off and go down to Manly Dam or go down, they go oh this is a great suburb, but the actual the gateway to the northern beaches, pretty much Manly Vale, Balgal, or whatever you call it, KFC. It's 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 an atrocious road, and I know we're going to have a. And I'm honestly, I'm pretty disappointed in the um in the trees you're putting in. You're putting none in the middle. You're just putting a few around the outside. It's not really going to change the streetscape that much. So, um, in answer to your question, I would want to beautify and provide a, a Condamine Street. I'd want to provide frozen. some sort of retail um, place for for um. For, for the suburb, some centre for the suburb. Where do you go and walk for a coffee? I mean, I think Rosemary Street's probably a better answer, if I'm honest. And I know you put in a, uh, potentially putting a cycleway in there, but all the projects we hear about, the trees, the cycleway, Millers having plastic, they all get put, they all get, they all, you all get, they all get announced and then they get delayed and we never see them. So I think Manly Vale's fed up of being put to the back of the queue. Can I? Can I just can I, say, Michael, just yeah, sorry, the other thing yeah. is, that when there's a development on Condamine Street, we've got that beautiful paving on the footpath and it's beautiful. But yet still, when there's a development, they dig up the pavers and they put the crappy asphalt. I wouldn't let my 84 year old mother walk down that footpath. And yet this happens only in Manly Vale. I can walk anywhere. No, it, no it's, it's terrible. It's why do they get their deposit back? if? They fill in, you know, some crappy potholes on footpaths where, you know, we still have a predominant, you know, 48% of our residents in Manly Vale are still over the age of 70. And I think it's despicable that we don't, you know, withhold the deposit and make sure that, to Stephen's point, that we maintain some beauty and some, you know, some, you know, it, it has to be at least returned to its prior state and not just let these developers they're just destroying our suburb and and if, you know if, if council if it goes to the land environment court like that in that um development proposed down near the deviation so be it but we have to maintain the integrity of our suburb and the beauty of our suburb and be it has to be true to that so i just want to jump in and say two things one, I like the idea of creating uh, a town centre of some sorts, but that needs to be 
maybe something that we can drive with residents. Um, we've got a place coordinator now as part of the Amalgamated Council. One of the services we added was a place coordinator and she's down there a lot. Um, and we see those problems in terms of it's not a defined tax center. You're kind of like a, a drive-through, you know, or you know, literally, like you come off there and um, and we saw that. And so when we, and to give you an example, when we asked the RMS back in, I'm going to say 2012 to Stephen's point about putting trees in the middle of the, the, um, the road there, the RMS point blank turned around and said, um, no, because, and, and this is not a word of a lie, because I just couldn't believe it. I had to ask them to repeat this. They said, no, no, we can't have trees in the middle because uh, if a car hits it, someone will die. So we've got to design the road. So you're going to have to build up the middle of the footpath. So you've got great big things there. So a car, if it veered off, can bounce off that concrete and into another car. And they won't put, and if we want to put trees on there, then we're going to have to um, close the road off every like three or four times a year to maintain that verge. And that's about $50,000 at the time to do that. So we said, Oh, and then there wasn't enough soil depth was another one that they threw in because of the old tram lines and stuff may still actually be on there. So we did look at that and that's what we've ended up with as um, Stephen pointed out, the trees on the side of the road there, that's the best we can do. Even they got fought against by some of the RMS guys. To then try and redefine a town centre, what do you do? Because my understanding of the LEP that was done decades ago had only shop top housing, which is what you're seeing developed now on Condomine Street. And that protected all the smaller houses back on the streets there and on both sides of the road. But you've still got that great big divide down the middle. I don't know what the answer is for that, um, but it needs, I think, the community to decide where it creates a town centre. So maybe Sarah, um, Chris Public could look at driving some with the community about doing that, defining it, because we've tried to do the Navalon, it's hilarious. They can't even work out what they want or agree. It's been two years of There might also them. be some quick wins, Michael. So I was actually, because I was down yes. on Rosebury Street on, on the weekend and um, met up with one of the residents, Holly, who sort of, we went for a bit of a walk down Rosebury Street and just had a look at that, the Bargala Depot, right? Which is all looks a bit ugly. So I had a chat to Head of Assets the other day and talked about, well, can't we take a bit of that land at the front put some hedges, little pocket park there, tidy it up, get rid of the rubbish so we could screen off that depot and have a little centre area where we can put a table and chairs for a picnic or what have you and, and do some things like that where we can actually beautify that little stretch of, of, of road there and do and provide that. As she was also talking about, you know, is this the main street? Is this the high street of Manly Vale? And I thought it sounds like there might be some support of that idea sort of listening to you. Bridget and Stephen. Um, yeah, and, and the RMS also don't that forget Sarah have the tunnel and they want to do some stuff around how they then do something in Manly Vale because it becomes the entrance there and you come out of the burnt bridge and then you've got Manly Vale. And so what do we do there? So how do we work with RMS? Because they've said they want to do some stuff there. They just don't know what. So maybe there's an opportunity, I guess. Because And to the other point, I, I completely sympathise with those dodgy, um, the footpath thing, saying the repairs, but that's, a, I promise you, it's across the whole of the LGA. And the reason I say it is because what happens is it's the most bureaucratic system in the world. So we, they tear it up, they put their services in, and then they patch it over, as you see, and not very well, and it's dangerous sometimes. Um, and if it is dangerous, we try and jump on that. So please just report that and we'll do our best to flatten it, whatever. But it still stays that way with that you know, nice footpath with that silly black thing tar through it. And we can't do anything to repair it until such times as whatever utility it was, be it um, water, be it electricity, be it NBN, whatever, until they sign it off, sometimes six to 12 months later, they uh, and then sometimes they do that. And then two months later, they're back there and you're going, oh my gosh, it is the worst system in the world. And we've been on Stokes to change it as the planning minister. He says he's going to, hasn't happened, but we try. Um, and the other thing was, yeah, you're right, Stephen. I'm, I, I wish COVID hadn't happened because I know some people are object to the Millers um, not being done yet and the, the soccer players and don't want it to happen. And I, and I understand that, but we've got money set aside. I think it's 10 million, Sarah, give or take, um, to like be spent that. down there um, to, to develop that properly and um, safely and the like. And the money keeps getting dragged out because we've had a was it forty seven million dollar budget million. last night? Yeah. Forty six million last night we got told to our budget. And so rather than borrow money like the federal and state government's done, we've just pushed projects back. And that's a simple one to push back. Um, so yeah, and we've pushed some surf club stuff back as well. Like there was we were told last night there's a about one point eight million dollars a year we've pushed back on a few things as well. So they're not the only ones missing out. And but we've also tried to maintain certain things. 
um, as well. So, but I hear your point. Um, I'd just like to be able to resolve it as well because I think Manly Vale's got a lot of potential. It's like it's complicated blank canvas and I'd like mm. to see something to your point. And yeah, because it is getting some of the density now. People are starting to build there now. I think the other one, one, area, I don't want to change the subject. So if we're still no. going on this, that's, we'll continue. But if we just hold the, um, yep. the other point around the, the creek at the bottom of um, Campbell Parade. Campbell Parade, yes. Um, you know, like it's, it's, it's ironic that you literally change from what was the old Manly Council to the Northern Beaches and the creek just suddenly becomes, you know, infiltrated with crap and it's it's just so like marked you can why do you think that happened well I, I just think manly council obviously had a better strategy in place for the remediation of the creek um and it just but we didn't change anything that's why i'm asked i'm curious is there some other development there, somewhere there is, because there is a, a um some sort of device there that collects the pollution but it just happens to be right on the on the old council border Right. Um, and I know that we did rely a lot on volunteers, including myself years ago, to, to plant and re yep. restore the native marshes. But yep, I, I can already it. see Lantana and everything coming back in. Um, and I just think, you know, we have a beautiful, beautiful asset. And um, I would like to see some funding. We've relied on volunteers, you know, with funding from the council for the actual planting, yep. but volunteers to plant the plants. And I think, you know, I'd love councillors to say, okay, let's coordinate this. You know, we need project managers. I'm sure there's a lot of people within the community of Manly Vale who'd be very happy to do the plant a tree day and, you know, to be involved. But, you know, it needs to be coordinated and project managed. To, to ensure that incredible asset that we have within Manly Vale um, prevails and it, you know, it, yeah, it needs to. That's, that's my only other thing. So sorry to change the subject. No, oh, not at all. I think I was just wondering if it was one of the victims of COVID as well, where we, all our bush regeneration people couldn't, our volunteers had to stop cold and we've had this issue. I think it's Warrywood well, Wetlands as, as was one of the ones that was most notable. So I just wonder if there was something else, but no, good point. And maybe we should accelerate delivery of more money, like Sarah was saying earlier and Chris. And I know. So yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking, but I think that's a really good point. Can I say last thing on the, on the, Gateway esque stuff. I mean, like, we're just in a, an anonymous suburb. If it wasn't for a beeline bus stop, you wouldn't even know where we were. Pretty much every other suburb in, 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 in New York, Northern Beaches has a signpost. Seaforth, Brookvale's got one that was built years ago. Mallyvale hasn't even got a signpost. There you go, Sarah. Honestly, there council you go, has given us Great nothing idea. for so long. Yeah. 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 We are, like, seriously, where is Mallyvale? But most people won't be able to know. The beeline probably has maybe solved a bit of that issue. But we're just an, an anonymous, sort of invisible Welcome to Manly Vale. Yep, down down there near just before you hit the, the what bottom freedom of the deviation. Yeah, well, pretty yeah, much the bottom every of the other su every other suburb's got one except Manly Vale. Yeah, yeah. good point. Good idea. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I all just the like former Manly out. ones do. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. No, uh, the uh, Bridget mentioned the bottom of Campbell Parade, and there's that little industrial area area down there, and I think there's a microbreweries open up there. I think it's called the Quaker's Hat. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that there's potential for growth in that sort of, uh, it, it puts me in mind of uh, Marrickville, you know, it's a formerly industrial area. It's now got microbreweries and restaurants and bars. And uh, also it's away from a lot of uh, housing. So, you know, you could have live music down there, make a bit of noise. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's um, actually one of our next questions, um, which Chris, I'm sure you could probably comment on, but um, one of the things we were thinking is um, to work with local businesses and community groups to revitalize the economies of the other areas of Manly Vale, Fairlight, Bargalla, Bargalla Heights, North Bargalla and Seaforth. Um, so Chris, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we've already talked about Rosebury Street and that's, I think it's got enormous potential, even though it's, it's technically in Bargalla. Uh, but also the uh, uh, the industrial area down at the bottom of um, Campbell Parade uh, near McKellar Girls. And uh, there's also um, away from drinking and bearing and whatnot, there's the community garden in Innes uh, Road, I think. Um, uh, there's probably potential for more of that sort of stuff in Manly Vale on the dam side. 
Um, I noticed I read today that in DY they had a community garden that had bush tucker. It'd be great to bring something like that to Manly Vale. I think that's a council initiative as well. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I see heaps of potential for Manly Vale. But of course, you do have Condamine Street running right through the middle of it. So it may have to be a, a case of um, uh, slightly smaller um, developments in, um, in uh, different parts of the area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Michael or anyone else, did anyone have anything to add to that about making Manly Vale a bit more of a destination for people? I do think the community garden was a, was a fantastic initiative. So I'm yeah. very grateful to Agreed. the council for purchasing that land. And, and that is an incredible asset that uh, in local families use that live in the apartments mm. um, who don't oh, have good. access. So that, that is a definite um, thank you to council for that. Um, that was and, Dr. Helen Wilkins. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think to Chris's point, that represents and symbolises what Manly Valley is. And I think any projects that replicate that is what we want. Um, yeah. And th that's definitely what we want. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, something down Campbell Parade or whether it's Bush Tucker Garden or, um, yeah. like And, and the space uh, that's at the end of Quirk Road, um, I, I think there's been a bit of work done on that recently from council. I'd love to see that continue. Um, Is that the little oval, the green space? Yeah, the little oval, yeah. yeah. Like, I'd love to see, um, that's come a long way in 20 years. Like I wouldn't let my children walk down there 20 years ago, you know, but they walk through yeah. there now and that's fine. Mm. Um, one, one of the suggestions on the traffic down there is maybe you could uh, have a one-way system, one way down Rosebury and the other way reopen Quirk Road and have traffic go back the other way to try to streamline that in a one way. But there is that lovely little, lovely, is that the right word? But the little pocket park there with the oval, I think there's some footy training that goes on there. I'd be interested in, your, in the community's views on something like that mm. in terms of a traffic solution. It's a, it's a bit of an expensive one, so it might be a little bit down the track. But I, I would have problems with that because I think, so it's the heavy vehicle. It's a heavy vehicle thoroughfare, Rosebury Street, because they're mm. making deliveries. There's the council depot. And yep. I don't think we want to expand the heavy vehicle footprint. Um, so it might, that would be a big concern for me if we did that. Um, I think point. we want to limit the heavy vehicle footprint that we have already. And um, it, that, that road, it's not only the traffic, it is the surface of the road. I mean, it's diabolical. Like you, you guys go down there all the time, I imagine. I mean, it's like who needs speed, speed bumps on this road when it, it has lots of lumps and bumps. So I don't think you want to replicate that anywhere else. I think we just have to manage the traffic flow better. Um, you know, I, I think it's a big shame we have a council depot on that road when we've got large retailers like Bunnings and Harvey Norman in the same street. I think, you know, that if you were planning a suburb, you know, 50 years ago, you wouldn't say, let's put Bunnings, a council depot, Harvey Norman, in all in that one street that's so close to a residential area you wouldn't do that um so it's a shame there's a council depot there but um that's what it is um, we can sell it we've got three or four i i think you should absolutely sell it and i think you we, should create a thoroughfare from the pocket park on one side and take it all the way through and absolutely michael so, i i no. I will do Good whatever to you to, to see that happen. The, the, um, the property strategy comes to the new council early next year. So no doubt the four depots that we own, one of them will be um, recommended to be sold and who knows which one. Um, and before we divert, just I want to plant a seed. But, um, what do people think about if the RMS were to build an overpass, a, a pedestrian overpass up there at the shops to connect the two sides as part of their contribution back to us for the tunnel? Is that something that we should be lobbying for, do you think? And I don't want an answer necessarily now, but I'm just planning to see there. Maybe that's something we want to talk about as well. Yeah. And I see... On a, um, a cycle path. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Across, Sorry. but across, you know, above, like, a, you know, yeah. maybe the yeah. B line somewhere, like to land somewhere, but maybe there's opportunity there. Sorry, yeah. Piper. Sorry, I was just going to say, I see Matt has his hand up. So did you have something to add there, Matt? Um, uh, you yeah, know, just still on Rosebury Street. So is that a council street or a RMS one? Yep. No, it's council. Council. So, yeah. 
So uh, I get asking us what we what we want there, but what are the options? Is is the one way the only option, or is there widening that can happen? Like what what else? Yeah, I don't understand why the street parking on that street. There's more parking on that street with Aldi, Bunnings, Beeline bus stop, uh, Woolworths. There's probably more parking on that street in any other street in 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 the Northern Beach. So why there's still street parking on there is is beyond me. It should be there should be a proper cycle lane in there, and maybe even turn one, that one lane into two lanes one way and one way the other because yeah it's always going to be busy but it doesn't need on street parking yeah oh, I, I reckon the answer to that would be that the businesses probably have demanded it in the past to, so they read so their staff can park there that's that's what i think the answer would be from the businesses but i don't know i i don't use it that often so but i know the issues it's got so that we can tends ask to be that what question, we can't we? We can ask that question and yeah, yeah. find out. Yeah, I just um, say there's, there's got to be there's got to be some other ones, and I, you know, I approve of the one way street down in Dy Beach, but this one's a little bit different, and um, that should be closed off and all the rest of it. Uh, yes, yeah, I agree with that too. But um, but back on Manly Vale, because uh, yes, the the Footy Oval and Quirk Road could there's a whole heap that could be done there, and putting a road through would make it more dangerous than uh, safe. Um, but also, so I'm commenting on about five different things, but the other one I just wanted Perfect. to drop in as a parent, I agree that the uh, community garden is amazing and we could do with more of them just as a parent. Can you chuck a toilet in there? I just think that's coming, isn't it, Sarah? Awesome. That would be awesome. I thought the toilet was coming, Sarah. I thought we were going to link it with the um, preschool next door. No, I'm not sure. That and may just, be. That would I'll, be good. I'll that Let's up. check that That's up. A good point. Yeah. Yeah. And just at the, in my last kind of rapid fire of uh, commenting on everything, uh, if you're going to sell the depot, don't sell it because another developer will just come in and put another Bunnings in there and put more traffic in. So turn it into a park. Controversial. <laughs> well, make it the public land or make it the town centre. No, no, it's so, not a bad controversy. It's a, I'm just saying that's an interesting one, Tyler. I, I totally agree. I think we deserve it. I think yeah. we, we've really and, taken oh, our load in the state. And then you can close off Rosebury Street for, totally like DY and make it all a walkway. And I it's agree. Walkway. Yep, Matt. Oh, here totally. we go. Now yep. we've got something. <laughs> yep. Aren't you glad I came? <laughs> well, I'm not opposed. Like We've taken our and, share. And my wife also has a second on the overpass idea. Yep. Oh, I'm writing all of these ideas down. These are terrific. So uh, we'll I like see the what. Green we... space idea. That's a really good one. Yeah. See, I was just talking. So uh, Craig thought we could do just, a pocket no, park quite definitely. quickly, but a whole big lawn is another another question. Town centre. That's that's a nice thought. Mm. A nice Maybe big green it's space. Specifically, not Manly Vale. <laughs> But it's, yeah, exactly. it's not Manly Vale, it's Vale. No. Well, we can change that, <laughs> can't we? Um, and <laughs> having grown up on the having grown up on the beaches, I actually understand why there's no sign to say Manly Vale. Um, because when I moved up here, I was forced to. Because growing up here, I didn't want to be anywhere near Manly Vale. Um, so, as much as I hear some comments about. Uh, not wanting to lose the good stuff around here. I also have to make the comment that, um, yeah, up until 10, 12 years ago, um, this was not seen as a good place around here and now it's beautiful. So someone's got to be commended for the fact that this, the whole thing's been lifted quite a bit over the years. Um, but yes, we don't want to see it go backwards either. Yeah, definitely. And one last thing, one last thing. Go and then I'll shut up. This is why I shut up on the D1, DY1. Um, from the DY1, I heard that there's, and I, I think uh, Monaval one as well, there's a, um, the place plan is a, a, or some version of that is around the B line. So is there something like what exists down in Monaval or a plan given that the B line stop is up there? Is there a grand plan for the main road? Uh, or is that still a layoff? I'm not aware of a Manly Vale place plan at the moment. I mean, the Manly place planning has just started um, sort of a couple of months ago and we've started having those meetings about the Corso down there. Um, 
but we do have these place and, and that's a very big extensive enormous strategic planning project but what we do have coming up is the new LEP the local environment plans that will consider some of these areas and I think maybe there's something we can ask council we can ask staff about whether we could do a, a sort of a mini master plan area for Manly Vale so that we were not waiting a long time for a big budget but let's get something started think, so Sarah, we do it strategically. We I think Sarah we just use transport for New South Wales. One of the, I've got a meeting set up with Stokes shortly to sort of raise this with him and I think this gets maybe put to the top of the list rather than my other top of the list so in hearing what I'm hearing maybe maybe we just elevate that and say this is part of what you need to do with transport. I know they're talking about they want to do something there at Manly Vale. Maybe we expand it to be a bit bigger than that and use their resources to pay for it and, and expedite it because um, I, I'm still confident the tunnel's going to happen. Um, others aren't so confident, but uh, I am still confident from what I'm seeing and hearing. So yeah, it's a great idea that everyone's had. So I think we we escalate it, escalate it now. Yep. Well, and that's our best source of money. Transport. Sorry, if you are talking to transport, then the other thing is something that I think you heard me yell about years ago when they did the um, Beeline intro up at the mall is um, it's quicker for me because I live just behind the B-line a couple a block or so. It's it's easier and sometimes quicker for me to get a bus to the city than it is to get to Manly on public transport. And the answer yeah. is catch a bus back to the mall and then catch another bus back up. Like, I know, it's crazy. So, we do have the hop, skip, jump bus from the B-line to Manly though. Is it, do I, you I ever get, you, catch that? I think with uh, just in all due respect, I think that's a big issue, but it's probably not an issue for this. Um, since the bus timetables have been changed, you speak to any teenager in Manly Vale and it is probably quicker to walk to Manly now than it is to get the bus that goes up through Bagala Heights. It's, it's an act, but I don't think that's this forum. I, the I hop, agree. skip and a jump is really, is really well known for the over 70s brigade, yeah. but um, nobody yeah. else. I've tried to look up the timetable and couldn't find it a few times and yeah, it's, it, yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful service. I'm not putting that down. And I have been on it before. And it's awesome uh, if you can figure it out. But um, it's just not easy to figure out. And it's a small, it's a mini bus. And my wife's in the background here. we got three kids, uh, uh, one or two of them pram size. Uh, and you can't do that on the hop, skip and jump. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's other things that need to happen. Is all well, I'm saying. We can talk to transport about that too, Michael, when you have your meeting. Uh, yeah, that's why I brought it up. Otherwise, I wouldn't say that it's a council thing to worry about. But no, no. But I think what the other, can't you ride a bike now off road from Manly Vale to Manly? Isn't oh, mate, the bike now? Path, almost. The bike paths are amazing. almost, that's almost. Right. So we need to fix those missing links and make them as safe as we can. But I think better than that, we need to actually what I've been banging on about for I still haven't got my way yet is get those proper bike cages where you can lock it up because bikes are expensive. Like e-bikes now mm -hmm. are even more expensive, but more common. I think there's going to be something. I know we've got past things and stuff, and it's cheap to put those bike things in. So I know they're talking about it, but like that's another project that got delayed because of COVID. The, the two of DY, but yeah. anyway, but good but points. The, the, so the bikes are obviously a great idea, but you you're dealing with there's a lot of young families around here. Oh no, I was just talking about the teenagers basically. But the teenagers was raised. Oh, yeah. I was thinking the teenagers. That was all. Because so, you're right, yeah. it's, cheap, um, it's easier to walk. Bikes bike are everyone. Forever. for work, it's a, it's great to ride a bike down to Manly and jump on a ferry if you're going into the city. So all of that's great. Uh, Family-wise, uh, if you're talking to transport New South Wales, buses would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, thanks for those great ideas. Did anyone else have anything to add about revitalising and supporting local businesses? Or if not, we'll move on to the third question. I mean, it might be another point that you're going to get to, but I mean, I would actually say, Providing cycle routes around the suburbs and quite frankly, the whole Northern beaches would be a good way to revitalize the suburb. Um, just getting in my car, going from the, my front porch to the Woolies car park and back isn't revitalizing the suburb. Cycling and walking through it and passing over shops and ducking in and out, that's the way to revitalize the suburb. And providing those foot, proper footpaths and proper cycle paths, that is the way you make a more European style, genuine community. 100%. Yeah. It's All right, well, we might our footpath in Quirk Road that's just been put in three months ago. What an incredible difference that makes. Um, I don't bike ride up, I don't ride my bike up Quirk Road anymore. I go on the footpath, and I wasn't able to do that until that path went in. Such oh, a fantastic. Thing, but it's been yeah. good. Great. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we move on to the business in there, though. 
Um, with Sorry. all the industrial zones around here, surely there's room for a business hub of some description. Um, oh, when you say business hub, a business commercial hub or an industrial? Uh, no, that, you know what I'm talking about with a, like a, um, a startup hub or a co-working space or bring something like that into the area because there's a ton of people working from home around here, even outside of COVID. Um, and with that kind of space around here, it's another opportunity like Bookie and DY to have a, um, a, a business community kind of a hub. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, Startup Venture Lab, uh, seven miles up at Seaforth. Um, but yeah, I, Mike, we talk about this all the time. You know where I'm coming from, but it's, yeah, if there's something like that, it's, it's a great area for it. And there's a lot of people around here that within walking distance of like that place down the back of um, uh, near the Calabria Club, um, build something in there that can create a center for entrepreneurs to come in um, and startups to happen. And you've got a good space. Or even on Rosebury Street, the, the half-used ones up there too. Did you out yourself as the Chamber of Commerce president, by the way, before? Sorry? Did you out yourself Vice as president, the Warringah Chamber Vice, Vice president, president? Unless sorry. you do something different next week at the AGM. <laughs> Just a patron, mate. <laughs> um, I see Maria's also left a question in the chat. Um, there's plenty of streets that don't have footpaths yet. Are they coming? So Michael <laughs> or Sarah? <laughs> Let Sarah take this one. <laughs> so uh, the, the traffic team have gone through and mapped all of the roads and, and prioritised all the requests for footpaths. And they've got, it's actually quite a cool system where they've ranked streets and areas based on how close they are to schools or shops, how important they are as connections. And they've mapped them out and prioritised them and they're working steadily through that, um, through that list. And I, I mean, how many were there, Michael? They were like, $110 million worth of footpaths yeah, conservatively. Was, um, and but they're going well, aren't they? Like they're getting through well, them. Yeah. Um, we can look on that list and see where the key streets are. So if there's key streets you're interested in, let us know and we can always go and find out and see where they are on that priority list. Um, but yeah, so they're trying to connect the schools to the shops to the and the main uh, walking routes as a first step. Um, and, and yeah, Anything else we spend on that? Three million a, we spend $3 million a year on new footpaths. We spend $11 million on maintaining existing foot or $12 million on existing footpaths. Uh, and where those existing footpaths are, we try and widen them to make them um, uh, bike and share paths, which some people hate, some people love. Um, but the $3 million has also been compensated with additional, I think we did we get another $3 million last year from state government as well on top of. So we are trying to do our best to accelerate delivery. But it's just one of those things that decades past, no council, um, for whatever reason, decided that footpaths were a priority. You build a house and just, oh, the grass verge will do, we'll put and spend the money elsewhere. And that's just how councils operated decades and decades ago. And whether it was yeah, for other reasons, I don't know, we wouldn't speculate, but we're just playing catch up now. And, but it's 110 million, I think, was a conservative figure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just conscious we are running out of time. So I just want to move to the third question. Um, and well, one of the goals is to address the needs of our marginalised, particularly our elderly, elderly and young people, to ensure they receive appropriate support for their ongoing health and wellbeing. Um, this is a really important one for me. I think sometimes marginalised groups are left out of decision making processes. And as a young person myself and a first time voter, I want to be that strong voice of support for the youth. Um, and I think a massive part of that is ensuring their mental well-being is supported. Um, as you're very aware, we're living in a crazy time at the moment. And I think mental health has definitely taken a big toll. So I would like to be someone um, to listen to people's concerns and do what I can to help. But did other people have something to comment on that? Other people by other people online or Sarah or? Um, other people online, anyone? Sarah? <laughs> yeah, I've been amazed uh, at the services that council has available in, in both those spaces. Um, it, and it, it just seems to me that maybe people don't know about them. Um, I mean, obviously there's things like Meals on Wheels, um, but aged care, help for aged care, care for the elderly, uh, services for the youth, um, personally, I, I, I found a great deal of um, um, benefits from my uh, being in a running club. Um, 
the I go back to the um, community garden in Manly Vale. Um, uh, you know, getting people outdoors, getting people walking around the area. I don't know. That's that's where I'm. That's where I'm going at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important. We, did you know? I mean, I, I, hands up if anyone knew that council during rounds one, two, and three of COVID, we have what they call a vulnerable persons list that we know of, and it's about nine thousand people. So in two days, that first lockdown, we rang our staff, um, rang all nine thousand people on that list, all staff, the CEO down, um, did all that, and we repeated it several times during lockdown. We did the kindness cards, the, the staff in their spare time the letterbox dropped them with their kids and whoever else. And so they did all that and weren't paid for it. And then separately, we created the Library to You service, which was the only one of its kind in the country. And um, that was extremely popular. And uh, was it the last lockdown, the 106 day one was 73,000 items to 33,000 homes, which is extraordinary. But then there's the mental health side of things. And to Piper's point, I mean, what these there's all these different groups that we're all trying to assist and help and we i think we have 90,000 is it sarah to the group in the north um like 180 and stuff because there's such a high rate of suicide or attempted suicide in sort of north of the bends there in particular and so we've done a lot of support they're filling the gaps that other governments aren't necessarily doing we have the suicide prevention committee um, we throw money at the band competitions we during the lockdown, we did the online stuff for the kids so that they could go to Glen Street Theatre safely and record music and um, all that we gave them the tools to connect um, remotely. So it does, I guess, kind of go largely unnoticed, but it was really pleasing to see, um, be part of that, to be honest, and, and it happened. And, and we need to keep doing more. And there's no question in Piper, that's why we invest in surf clubs, sports clubs. We try and invest more in mountain bike has become a massive thing. And, um, you know, we need to spend more on that now and find more, places and things and we need to do more as the, the act like it's just a tough thing now so yeah I, i'm glad you raised that um and because even the manly one that we think sarah we contributed to that manly community northern beaches at raglan street there we spent a million dollars in the fit out there fit it out, yeah, um, so james could move them out of the school and take credit cheeky yeah. bugger but anyway well and even you know <laughs> if you think about the hsc students and and so right. yes we did some advocacy on that on behalf of them because we the mental health impacts on those students was quite extraordinary um, from the delays in those exams and, and going through COVID. But so council also did some, um, and oh, Stephen, I'll, I'll throw to you just a sec, but I was just gonna say with the library program, the, the lock-in for the library for the HSC students, yeah. the library staff pivoted that to an online service and online um, activities for the kids so that they didn't miss out entirely and could still have some important emotional and social support from each other whilst they were you know, stuck in their bedroom studying. So it was great. Yeah. Stephen? Oh, this is just a minor point compared to the wonderful work that's been done with all the things you just talked about regards well-being. But I mean, I'm, um, seems you mentioned mountain biking. I, I am a bit disappointed that council has flattened a load of the jumps that local kids have built in parks. I know they're not meant to do it, but that has clearly been their outlet. Every single park, every single medium strip's got a little, little, little dirt mound in it. And um, I think it could be let go, if I'm honest, but uh, I don't understand why council's chosen to flatten yeah. most of them. Well, I think a lot, some of them have been let, let go at the moment, but there are some that have been like in the national parks and where they're destroying habitat, which is just too precious to, to allow those sort of damage to continue. It's, it's really hard to balance it at the moment. And it's not just around Manly Dam and it's across the beaches we've ha having this. So I think they've been turning a blind eye to a lot of it at the moment, but there's, there's been some larger areas where there's been some... Uh, there has been some flattening of things, Michael. And, and the, the, yeah, no, the right parents. That's a good example of because you're right. I mean, we're not perfect or anything like that, and we don't. And I can tell you, our staff don't want to get rid of those jumps. But when they're in riparian zones, such as at Man, uh, at Coco Lagoon, what we've done there is we've grabbed those young bike riders in particular and their parents and said, guys, work with us to build some jumps over here, just not in the riparian zones. So they kept their jumps. The grove up there um, got a bit out of control and there was additional stuff that was happening as opposed to what was, but that could possibly have been because council didn't live up to its promise as well of what it said it would do. So I think potentially staff might have dropped the ball on what they were doing in the grove and subsequently the kids just took over and with their parents and potentially went too far. So now we're also, but proactively we're, we're building a new park up at um in seaforth near the oval there we're just waiting on the land transfer from state government which they've promised us but it's in the never never but we keep chasing it's also on my to-do list with stokes 
but um, but James is also chasing that up for us. But we've got money sitting there to spend, and we've got the design. The kids have already worked out the plan for it. We're doing a new one up at um, Bell Rose. So there, there's things happening, but we're working with the groups as best we can across. Like Warrywood is another one. We're not Warrywood. I'm Bayview. We're working with the kids and the families. Colleroy is another one. We're working with the kids and the families. So we're trying to manage it, but there's plenty and of... And we got that yeah. money for Manly Dam as well. So we've got a million dollars. I think it's not next year. It might be the year after. Um, 50000 to design it with trail care, I think, next year and a million bucks plus million the 90 bucks. already being spent every year. So that's to maintain it but it got smashed during COVID and it's like the dogs the dogs are everywhere at the moment it's just like gosh, dogs and anyway. bikes at the moment yes yeah. but, but so can I say, like, obviously so I mean I would I would suggest that the fact that these jumps are appearing everywhere is suggest it's suggesting a need which obviously you're talking yes. about is addressing yeah. um I know Sarah you know you mentioned in some correspondence with me you know you, you said it sort of might suggest that building tracks would reward environmental vandalism i believe was the uh the terminology it's, it's a view um, that's been held yeah it has been suggested well, it's, a, it's a view that you suggested during the growth debate that you're on record as doing it so but i mean i think if that is a really backward non-progressive head in the sand sort of mentality that we can't let progress it, it, the, the current the current um the current policy of restriction and containment is not working and that is what, and, and you're seeing, and, and kids digging up every single park is the result of this policy vacuum from council. Um, and, and, and so, you know, something's got to change. Um, yeah. And I think just, yeah, I, I, I just think council sometimes is a little bit too knee jerk and, and the NIMBYs win every time. And I think it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, we are just running out of time um matt did you have something really briefly to add and then we'll just have to wrap it up unfortunately <laughs> briefly um no i wanted to ask you a question um i'm middle-aged and i'm pretty sure a fair few of the commenters uh, are not in their 20s anymore um so as far as activities for youth and thinking about um housing affordability and next generation and whatever uh, you're it piper so what do you <laughs> If you're living in Manly Vale, what would you want to see around here? Um, I just definitely think, as we've already sort of talked about, a bit more of a community feel. I know young people, we like catching up with each other and having somewhere to hang out. Um, we've seen that in Manly at the office um, lately, <laughs> which is <laughs> being closed off now. But, um, yeah, just having places to um, get together and just knowing that there's a community around you is really good for mental health um, and yeah having things to do so I'm involved with the surf club as I've said um, which is, takes up a lot of my time but I love it and that's a family for me so just um, different places like that where people can meet up with other people their age and um, yeah. So old school days there was a a semi-famous pub around here. Uh, Chris mentioned uh, uh, live music venues. I'm a big fan of live music venues. Yeah, definitely. Well. Is that the sort of thing that? Yeah, um, more community the events. Next generation um, actually wants, or yeah. is it just old people talking out there, whatever's? Yeah, no. Um, more community events like that. I know there was some live music put on at the Harbour Diggers um, last year, which was really good, and um, people really enjoyed that. So just things like that, um, where we can all get together and hang out um yeah unfortunately we're out of time that hour went really quickly and I um we had some great discussion so I'm sure in the future there'll be more opportunity to continue this discussion um before you leave tonight I just wanted to quickly give you an outline about how democracy works in our local area um so on the 4th of December you will need to vote at the local council election for three manly ward councillors and the Northern Beaches Council has five wards, Pittwater, Narrabeen, French's Forest, Kirko, and the amazing Manly Ward, which includes Manly, Fairlight, Seaforth, Balgala, North Balgala, Balgala Heights, Clontarf, Manly Vale, and the south side of Queenscliff. So three councillors are elected in each ward from the different groups or parties who stand for election. Um, so all three of us are ready to represent you and we will take your concerns and advocate for you in council. So Excellent. on December 4th, we'd encourage you to look for the Your Northern Beaches Independent team on the ballot paper and vote one above the line for Your Northern Beaches Independent team. 
But um, yeah, to finish off, hopefully we can meet you all in person soon. Look out for the orange shirts and caps or email us to continue the chat. But that con uh, concludes tonight's town hall session. So thank you for sharing your thoughts and your care for our great community this evening. Um, we've had a great chat and I know we've been taking notes and listening to your concerns and great ideas. Um, so hopefully you can take that on board, but have a great night. Thanks everyone. Thank you. And thanks for all your thank questions, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good night.